Hi friends, today we want to share with you five useful tips when talking about free gingival grafts. Let's go with it. Yeah. Hi, my name is Jose Luis Mumpel, and together with my partner in crime, Dr. Juan Lara, today we're going to share with you five useful tips when talking about free gingival graft. Free gingival graft is not a new technique. It was developed many, many years ago to increase keratinized tissue around teeth. Nowadays, this technique is very, very important. It's almost mandatory when you're talking about implants. Why? Because as we like to say, keratinized tissue is our implant seat belt. It's very, very important to have keratinized tissue, thick, oh, not only uh, when talking about uh, with also hair, because it will be the, the tissue in charge of sealing our implant. It's very, very important to be sure that our implants will last in time. We'll, we'll, the prognosis will be better. So we want to share with you five tips that will make your clinical practice easier and faster and having a more predictable uh, surgeries and having more predictable surgeries when doing free gingival graft. First tip we want to share with you today, it's about how to prepare our, uh, our graft, okay? The first thing is to prepare the recipient side. We're going to do our incisions in the mucogingival junction and prepare our periosteal bed. Okay, the, that periosteum will be the one in charge of vascularizing our graft. But the first tip is related in how big are we gonna uh, take, are we gonna harvest our graft. The envelope where the suture comes in, we are gonna use it as a template, okay? We're gonna get it, we're gonna go to the recipient side, we're gonna cut that little paper down to size, and then we're gonna go up into the palate, and we will have a template, and we just need to follow the edges to be sure that we are harvesting a free gingival graft with exactly the exact size that we need, okay? Not bigger or smaller. The second tip we want to share with you is related uh, to how to harvest this uh, free gingival graft. Okay, once we have the template, once we went into the palate and did our uh, perimeter of the of the template, we're gonna get some more anesthesia. And you may think, but the patient is already under anesthesia, is already numb. Yes, it is. But by placing some more anesthesia, we're gonna kill two birds with one stone. Why? Because on one hand, we're gonna control bleeding because of the vasoconstrictor of the anesthesia, and the second one is going, the, the tissue is going to swollen a little bit, that way it's gonna be easier to harvest it. And this leads us to the third tip that we want to share with you. This tip is about the thickness of the free gingival graft. We do not want a very, very thick, three, four millimeters uh, graph, no. We don't want a very, very thin 0 0.2, 0 0.3 millimeters graph, no. We want a graph around one millimeter. Why? Because one millimeter is a thickness that will allow a fast vascularization and also we leave connective tissue on the donor side, being the post-op much better for our patient. So, regarding the thickness of our graph, we want it around one millimeter, no thicker, no thinner. This is the, the size where the results are the best. The fourth tip is talking about a complication. What about if when we are harvesting the free gingival graft, it starts bleeding? What can we do? We have three options. First thing that we must do is compression with our finger, just compress what is bleeding and the bleeds will stop. And you have some time to think. Then you can continue compressing until it stops bleeding. Second way is a cauterize with an electrical uh, scalpel, uh, electro cauterizing, and it will stop bleeding. It might s smell a little bit strange, but at least it will stop bleeding. And the third option is suturing right behind the artery. So we can close the artery and it will stop bleeding. So remember, if it start bleeding right immediately, just compress with your finger and then you have time to think what to do next. And the fifth tip is also talking about a complication. What if we have harvest our fingerboard graph a little bit smaller of the area we want to cover? Then we have an option which is harvesting a little bit more from the other side, but if we don't want to, to harm our patient, what we can do is to cut this uh, fingerboard graft from both sides, crossing all the cuts, so it can 
stain a little bit more and we can have more surface to place it on okay so guys these are the five tips we wanted to share with you today keep practicing if you have any question just comment in this video don't forget to like the videos subscribe as we always say the scalpel in your hand but the prostodontic work in your mind see you soon guys mm -hmm.